Hey, hey, what's up? Matt Cooley with So Cooley English here. And today I've got nine free online resources to share with you to help with your English or other language that you're learning. All right, come on, let's go bring the bird. There's a ton, a plethora. Oh, that's a great word. Plethora. Plethora. There's a plethora of language learning resources online. Yeah, there are courses you can take and private teachers like me. But to maximize your language learning potential, you'll need to use every resource available. Like with so many other skills, when learning another language, practice is everything. We have to practice speaking, listening, reading, and writing as often as possible. Number one. All right. First up, we have CambridgeEnglish.org. Of course, Cambridge University is the very famous university in England. It's 800 years old, the fourth oldest university on the planet. Cambridge is really well known for their English exams, uh, the Cambridge English Assessment, IELTS, and they also have another one that they do online. These are things you might do for employment or for immigration purposes. Now, most of the things that we want on this site are going to be right here under Learning English. We have Exam Preparation. Exam Preparation will take us to a different page showing us all of the different exams that Cambridge does. We'll check out B2 First. This is a really common exam for uh, immigration or, or employment purposes. I've helped a lot of students prepare for this. You can come here, see lots of things about the format of the test, how long things take, and what the format for the test itself actually is. Now, we'll come to preparation, and you actually have examples of the test. You can download these, take the test by yourself. I recommend doing this under the exact same conditions that you'll take the test in, okay? Going back to our learning English, we have test your English. A lot of students ask me about their English level. This is a really good way to assess your own level and for the purposes of, of getting certified, it will help you to find out what Cambridge English exam you might need to take. And it's also kind of fun. Coming back to our learning English tab, we have free activities. There's all kinds of things to do to help you improve your, your grammar, listening, reading, etc. It's all free. There's a little bit of something for everybody here. Number two! This is writeandimprove.com. This is another Cambridge product. It's an automated system to help you with your writing. Here we have beginner, intermediate, advanced, business, and just for fun. You'll choose your level, and I did this a little bit earlier. Write paragraphs to answer the question about office design. It's a relatively short exercise. This was my answer here. My score from zero to five was four. And of course I tried to uh, not make it quite perfect because I wanted to I wanted you guys to see how this works now a word of caution this is a completely automated system it means that a computer is grading your work it's the thing that's giving you the feedback so it's not perfect but this is a really good way to get in some of that extra practice with writing by yourself and Personally, I think it's kind of fun. Three. This one might be something that some of you know, but perhaps you haven't thought about it as a language learning resource. TED. TED.com, 
of TED Talks is a really, really great asset. It's all about ideas, education, ways that we can improve ourselves in the world. It's a bunch of speeches where one individual is talking to a group of people. Let's take a look at one. The rise of predatory scams and how to prevent them. If you look down here, you'll see a transcript. A transcript is everything said in a video written in text. You can see as I put my mouse over the different elements, they're highlighted. You can navigate by clicking on any part. It will take you to that part of the video. I can't wait till I'm 70. This is really great for shadowing, which I have a video in Portuguese and one in English on this channel explaining how to do that. For listening comprehension, for practicing how well you understand what you hear, I recommend listening to a portion and then listening to it again and again and again until you're able to understand what you hear without reading it. Basically, listening comprehension or practicing your listening works like this. You'll watch a video one time through with no subtitles. No subtitles. Listen. This is very important. I have far too many students who don't understand one very simple thing that they're doing to themselves that's hurting their ability to understand English. You should not be using subtitles when you watch things in English, okay? If you wanna watch something through one time with no subtitles and then watch it again or watch just the parts that you had trouble with with subtitles okay good good but if you're watching something for the first time with subtitles you are not going to improve why because you're only learning to read fast if you don't challenge your ear if you don't teach your ear how to understand it's never going to learn. You are only going to learn to read very quickly. And when you are in a situation needing to speak to a native speaker, you are going to be guessing. Move away from subtitles. You don't need it. You'll be okay. Four. Four. And up next, the YouTube channel Easy English. It's a part of easy languages of which there are a few. <coughs> easy English and the easy languages channels are all about man-on-the-street interviews. So Easy English is a really good way to practice your listening. These are real people who are just answering a question. Nothing is scripted. In general, listening to real natural dialogue, real natural conversation between people, things that are unscripted, is the best listening practice. It's the closest thing that you can get to having a conversation with someone. You'll have a, usually a native English speaker walking around on the streets and asking people a particular question for the day. Today, do Brits really like Mr. Bean, the comedian Mr. Bean? So you go through and find out. But I don't think he takes himself too seriously. I mean, there's the episode when he puts the turkey on his head, he gets the turkey stuck on his head, and right. he sort of, um, I think he can see the funny side. Yeah. He's got that self deprecating That's right. humor. That's right, which Brits have, yeah. Five! And now for something completely different Anki. Anki is an SRS a spaced repetition system or spaced repetition software. You can use it for the memorization of 
any subject, okay? The way that it works is this. You create a deck, as you see here, these are all decks that I've created myself. You can also find decks in different languages for different purposes. I know um, a lot of medical students, for example, use this to learn the massive amount of, of medical vocabulary that they need, right? So we'll take a look at one of my, we'll take a look at my old Portuguese deck. It'll tell you every day how many new cards uh, you have, how many cards you're in the process of learning, and how many older cards you'll need to review. And you can change all of this in the settings. So you can see here we have something written in Spanish. Manejo mi auto nuevo. And I need to translate this from memory into Portuguese. Jerijo meu carro novo. Jerijo o meu carro novo. The system keeps statistics on each individual card and will try to show you that card again right before you forget it, okay? That's the magic of the SRS. So we look at the bottom here and we have, again, hard, good, and easy. And above that, we can see some times. These times, this is the spaced part of the repetition. So if this was very difficult for me, then I should choose 10 minutes or again, and it will show this same card to me in 10 minutes or less. If it was difficult, but I was able to answer, then I select hard, and it will show me this card again in four days. If I got it, but I didn't think that it was easy, then I'll select good. For this particular card, it will show me again in 3.7 years. That's right, 3.7 years, and the easy is 9.7 years. When you first get a card, it'll tell you something like, show me again in less than one minute, or I've got it, show me again in less than 10 minutes, or good, show me again tomorrow. The more times that you review the card, the longer time you can have between the times that you review. There are other programs like this or other websites like this. Memrise is another one, but the power of this one is really, really great. I like to use the desktop version. There's a desktop version for both Mac and Windows. There's an online version that you can access through your through your internet browser. There's another version for your Android phone, and these are all free. There is a version for iPhone, but last I checked, you had to pay for that one. They can all sync up, meaning they can all synchronize. They can all be linked together to show you the same cards and to keep track of the statistics on all of those cards. I could very easily do an entire series of videos on how to use Anki and how powerful it is, but basically I do it like this. I make my new cards using the computer and then review them on my phone. I'll shoot another video soon showing a lot more about how to get the most out of this. But in the meantime, go download it, check it out. I strongly encourage using Anki every day to really improve your vocabulary like that. This video has turned out to be a lot longer than I originally expected. So I've decided to split it up into two videos. That's it for part one of the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, Come on, let's get let's get this out there, you know? People need to know. They need to know.